Hey everyone, Mo here, and before the video begins, I just want to let you guys know that my schedule has opened up for me to do coaching again. So if you're interested in private one-on-one -on -one coaching for me to help you, whether you're a newer player and you want to excel at the game very quickly and learn the fundamentals without developing any bad habits early, or if you're an experienced player who's already maybe platinum or diamond in your top 1%, but you need some help filling in the gap to get you to that 0.01% to make you just some of the best of the best, then hit me up on Discord and I can get you in some private one-on-one -on -one coaching lessons to help you polish up any skills you want to refine and help you learn all of the secrets to becoming a top player. That's it. I hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, Mo here, and in this video, I'm bringing you guys a deck guide on the deck Gohard. Uh, Gohard is a not balanced, stupid deck that is definitely getting nerfed soon, and it's been plaguing the meta and plaguing solo queue in tournaments for about a month now, a little bit over a month now, I don't know. All I know is that this card sucks to play against. And it's been a tier one deck ever since this card basically came out. Um, people like Sarah have been, you know, looked at it when it first came out. And then it's only just gotten refined since then. And it's basically refined now in a fully form. In its full form. And it uh, has just about the same cards in every single version with a little bit, a few changes. Maybe like three flex cards here and there, maybe four. Um, but if you guys don't know, if you've been living under a rock, Go Hard is one mana... Drain one from a unit and then create two copies of Gohard into your deck. Once you cast Gohard three times, it transforms into Pack Your Bags. Pack Your Bags is a one mana deal 35 damage, board wipe your opponent because it's one sided, and then kill them spell. It's one mana deal five damage to all enemies, including the Nexus, and then it turns back into Gohard. So you see the goal here is to just play Gohard three times, get your Pack Your Bags, board wipe them, and then just kill them. You do this by playing Gohard, and then you're in SI Bilgewater, so you have a lot of card draw. You have Pool Shark draws you cards, Fortune Coker draws you cards, Glimpse, Salvage, TF draws you cards, Zap Sprayfin not only draws you cards, but it literally fetches a Gohard. It tutors your Gohard for you. you. The only spells that cost less than three are Glimpse and Gohard. So if you cast like one or two Gohards into your deck before using the Zap Sprayfin, you'll have like a 75% chance to just fetch out a second or third Gohard. After that, I mean, you have your defensive spells and your, like, Whales, Vengeance, Ruination, and your top-end finisher with the Ledros. So, this deck is just a very fun aggro combo control mid-range anti-combo style deck. Um, and that's not really an exaggeration. So, yeah, the entire idea of this deck is just play your Gohards, survive, chump with your little small units until you can cast your Pack Your Bags and then win with, like, a Ledros. Or your Pack Your Bags and then swing. So the idea of mulligans for this deck are going to be you want go hard early, at least one go hard, more than likely two go hards early. And then you're going to want some amount of early game units, a way to draw your go hards, and then probably a zap spray fin. So a really, really good hand will look like go hard, zap spray fin, and then like a fortune croaker Elise or something like that. That way you can play your go hard on one, play your Elise on two to apply a little bit of pressure as well as have a blocker. Then you can zap spray fin on four to get your gohard back to start doing it some more and then croaker to draw some more gohards you usually want to save all of your draw spells or after you start casting gohards or you know to find your guards if you have a guard in your hand don't like fortune croaker on two just to fortune croaker on two or fortune croaker on three wait to use your fortune croakers and your zaps and your salvages until you've already cast one or two gohards just to increase the odds of you actually drawing into the gohard more because this is by all definitions just a one mana win the game card after you get after you gohard three times and you get to pack your bags level you literally just get to abuse your opponent while holding up one spell mana the entire time like, just think about the fact, just think about that for a second. Usually you're like, oh, well, and if my opponent goes under four mana, they don't have deny, so I can punish them. Or if my opponent goes under like five mana, they can't grasp me, or three mana, they can't do whatever. This is literally one mana. Your opponent would have to be an idiot if they ever go under one mana in a go hard deck when they have pack your bags open. Like, all you get, you just get to abuse them if you get to play this go hard pack your bags deck. So. That's it for the deck overview. Like I said, there are some um, flex blots. Like, I decided to play Wiggly Burblefish. Just because in the mirror match, it helps you kill them, like, out of nowhere late game. Um, 
as well as it just does apply pressure in some of the matchups you want more pressure. Uh, the second effect of granting you a random one cost spell um, sometimes matter, most of the time doesn't. Most of the time, like I said, I just use this as a nice uh, way to apply more pressure if you don't get your pack your bags early. So um, that's it for the like overview of the deck. I'll go over now what each uh, card is in the deck for specifically, and then we'll just go ahead and get into a couple of games. So uh, your Gohards are in the deck because you're a degenerate and you hate yourself. Uh, Jagged Butcher is in because it can randomly be a nice beat stick on one, um, and it's a good blocker on one. Pull Sharks here to draw you more Gohards. Dreadway Deckhand here to make your Gohards deal two damage, as well as make your red cards into a board wipe. Elise is here because it's the best two drop in the game. It applies both aggro pressure and it can block anything that's like a 2-2. Fortune Cogger is here to draw more Gohards. Glimpse is here to draw more Gohards. Salvage is here to draw more Gohards. Twisted Fate is in here because it draws you a card. You're almost always using blue card on Twisted Fate. Um, unless you just get like a really, really nasty board wipe with a red card and you need to, like you don't have a whale in your hand, um, you can use it. But like 70 to 75% of the time, you're using it for a blue card. Uh, Zap's here because you hit yourself. Withering Whale is here because you need to not die. So Whale is good, especially Whale if you can get like a keg out with Dreadway Deckhand. You can uh, Withering Whale, deals two damage to everything, makes the board wipe even more. Burble Fish, I put in here, like I said, to apply a little bit more pressure in both the Mirror Match and those like slower decks like the Go Hard, or not Go Hard, but uh, Fielder Rush and stuff like that. Uh, your Vengeance is because you like killing stuff. Your Ledros because you like killing your opponent. And Ruination because you enjoy killing stuff. So everything in this deck is really cheap blockers slash attack damage. You just get your little bits of chip damage in, finish them off with a go hard, and then just get your big swing in for, you know, 5-7 damage. So that's it for the overview. That's what every card is in here for. Uh, now I'm just going to show you guys a couple of games with the deck and kind of talk through what my thought process is when I'm making each play. All right. So we're against Scouts Plaza here. Should be fine so we're just gonna we're gonna keep this elise because we're attacking on two and it's a really good early card mulligan everything else because again i just want to look for some gohards and eventually pack your bags um we don't have a gohard yet so that kind of sucks but we should be okay elise beats just about everything so this is where we would really want to have our one mana two two because then he can't attack us with this and we definitely just beat their faces in so let's go and play elise i don't bite and then we'll get to swing with Elise. Hush now. We have this Ruination, which is good. Again, we don't have a go hard, which sucks. Most of the time, they won't block this. Oh, Sharp Sight? Sure. Say, so most of the time, they won't block this because they're afraid of go hard. Your opponent will always play like you have go hard until you just show them, like, prove that you don't have go hard. So, worst case here would be Misfortune. Sure, so most people don't actually swing like this. I don't really know why he's doing it. That's kind of weird. But we'll go ahead and block. We'll play Elise. Because again, most people are afraid of you go harding their unit. So like if we had go hard you, he would have just sacrificed his unit for nothing. Like to get in one damage. Which is really weird. Um so if he has plaza here, we're kinda sad. If he doesn't have plaza, if he has no plaza, no misfortune, we're big chilling. Okay, crack shot, crack shot, one drop. Let's see what we got here. Zap spray fin, that's a good card. So let's go ahead and zap. Get our go hard. I mean our glimpse. Now he has Grand Plaza. I guess let's just swing. You won't suffer long. So he should. Most of the time after you play Zap, they like really respect the Go Hard. They're like, oh, he for sure has it now. Uh, but we don't, so we don't need to use it yet. We'll save this glimpse for after we block, just to save us some extra damage. Double glimpse here. So that means our Zaps are basically guaranteed to get us um, whatever they're called. Packs your bags now. Uh, let's go ahead and just draw a card. Herbal Fish. Okay. This hand's not ideal, but it's actually not the worst hand I've ever seen. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, we'll take this block for sure. Every time. Um, yeah, we can just pass here. This is fine. Force out a spell from him. Force out a something. If he has Ranger's Resolve, we're kind of sad. No Rangers Resolve. We're actually looking pretty good. He's down to three cards in his hand. And his board is not that threatening. Uh, let's salvage here. See what we draw. That can TF. Okay, so that TF will be really good. We can do a burst pass. So that salvage is basically trying to find a way to deal with this board. Uh, we have 
deck hand now. So worst case scenario is he has a rally and will be very sad. If he doesn't, this TF red card just completely smokes his board. So uh, let's go ahead and play this other deck hand. See if we can bait him into playing another unit. He doesn't, so let's go ahead and play this red card here. This should board wipe him. Unless he's playing like single combat. And we're feeling pretty good. And if he has to use something like a sharp sight or a repose, and he has to use that on defense, we're really happy. So basically our opponent's hand was just garbage. We ended up, you know, board wiping with the TF, and that's how you do things. We didn't even need go hard that game. It was in the cut. So that's kind of like one of those awkward games where you don't have go hard. You can still win just because your deck can deal with units. Like you can still board wipe them. You can still apply pressure. And eventually, like, I would have leveled up TF that game because I had so many draw cards in my hand. Like, I had double glimpse and I think a croaker in my hand again. So, leveling up TF is also a really good threat to look out for. Pingu. Alright, so we're against Pingu. Pretty good player. He's on Karma Zoe. So, this is actually an anti-Gohard deck. So, I mean, his deck is literally built with the idea of beating Gohard. So... Uh, this match is going to be kind of rough, but we'll see if we can pull it off here. We'll just pass. Don't play Pool Shark on one. Pool Shark is typically a three drop. Because most of the time you can just play, unless you have like double Jagged Butcher in your hand. And so you want to play like Pool Shark on one and you're attacking on evens. That's like very specific. Because then you can open attack with Pool Shark and then you get to play two three threes. Other than that, it's usually like never worth it. So Solari Priestess, no big deal. Don't really care about that. Daylight we'll just go ahead and open with Pool Shark. Away. Pool Shark is a very solid 3-drop because you can play almost everything in your deck on turn 4. That's uh, not one of the things you can play on turn 4. Let's see here. I don't think we can get this down. We can get this down to 4 cost. For sure. We can like glimpse this. That'll put all our burble fish down to 5. And then we can play the Elise spell. I'll put our Burble Fish down to four. Assuming he doesn't kill our Elise here. If he doesn't kill the Elise, okay. One star's is another spark. Hell sure. So we can play the Elise spell here. Get some spiders. And then play yes. Burble Fish on four. Get us a random spell. Jettison. This can generate you go hard. Um, I've never had it generate a go hard for me, but it's definitely possible. So he discarded a Pale Cascade that tells me he just has a second Pale Cascade in his hand, more than likely. Or a Hush, something like that. So let's see, what does he got here? Not really sure what Souls. He gets stunned, maybe? Concussive Palm? Okay. Sure, so that just stops us from attacking with Elise. And we don't really care too much. We just do the passes. Here we're just going to TF blue card. Oh, sure. So this is definitely just a Bell Cascade card. We just go block, block, block. Okay. So it's TF blue card. Um, okay, so I actually, actually almost baited myself right there. So you do want a TF blue card to try and level your TF. But a secondary thing you can do is you want to play the Zap Sprayfin because you can get your Gohard from it. Keep up, keep this way you can start shuffling Gohards into your deck before you do stuff like uh, Twisted Fate and all these other draw spells. Unfortunately, we didn't draw the the uh, Gohard, so it didn't matter. We actually haven't drawn Gohard in either of the games we played today. So we can just do a big swing here. I'm fully expecting at least one Hush to come out on my 3-1 here and him just block it with like Spacey Sketcher. Okay, if he has double hush, that's like probably worst case scenario. Not double hush, interesting. Uh, so yeah, so let's get him for six damage. No big deal. We'll never use this jettison. We'll probably just use like Twisted Fate spell to shuffle this jettison into our deck. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and like Twisted Fate and then probably use our pick a card here to try and level our TF. Uh, this deck doesn't actually play any removal spells, so. The only thing they could play with, to stop it would be like a Will of Ionia. We'll do this. A blue card. Soak it in. See if we can draw something good. We drew a deck hand. That's not bad. 
star shaping himself okay so he has two bit uh, he has two celestial cards he has one big celestial card that costs seven or more and one celestial card that costs between four and six so here i think we can level our tf let's go ahead and just eat our spiderling or at least force out an opify you dare. okay okay so that puts our tf at three So we can do this now. This will go ahead and shuffle in. And we are going to burn a bunch of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to go ahead and burn two cards here. But as long as they're not like two really important cards, we should be okay. It's one, two. So now he has to kill the Swiss of Fate right now. Like his, basically the, one of the cards he had to have gotten off of the Solari Priestess had to have been either a Comet or a Meteor Shower. Uh, basically just something to kill the Swiss of Fate. If he didn't get that, then we're just going to do this. Level our TF. Now we have level TF. We're pretty happy. Looks like I'm on a hot streak. Our purple fishes are getting pretty cheap. They're down to two already. So I guess we can just go ahead and play Mr. Burble Fish. We have Absorb Soul, which won't really matter. He's just passing a whole bunch on seven. I don't really know what he's doing. I can't think of any board wipes. I could think of, he could have gotten the Celestial card that exiles all threes. Yeah. So he could have just passed and taken all that damage. That's okay though. Um, that doesn't matter. We're just going to play a bunch of cards here. So like we get to play Elise. I pull the strings. We could have Absorb Soul and that would have allowed us to play uh, Wiggly Burble Furble Bish. But we're chilling. Instead, we'll just play our Pool Shark here. We got our TF. Let's just play our TF. The table. Next time when you start playing Ledros, we still haven't drawn a single go hard. There's 18 cards left in our deck. That's uh, pretty crazy. That, and the bottom 18 cards of our deck, they're uh, three go hards. We got Even Worn. That card's pretty good. So it draws us some cards, does some stuff. Down to 18 cards. 17 cards, no go hard. Okay, we can do this. This little red card is face. We get to push him for lots of damage. Star shaping his health up. Sounds good. We'll hit him up for a bunch here. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we can put him to 7 here. Just pretty good. I mean, we're just an aggro deck at this point. We force him to answer us. We'll eventually find a go hard, guys. I promise. I do play Gohards in this deck. But this just shows you the power of the deck. Like, even without Gohard, I'm still just, like, completely in control of that last game. And so far, I'm looking to be in complete control of this game, too. I got most here. Like, he can play, like, a Karma, and I don't think we really care. We'll trade with the 2-2 two -two here. He can pass because we have Lethal, so we have to force him to play something. Twin Sisters. Sure. So... I think we actually just want to play a bunch of cards. So let's start with... We'll start with you. Actually, we just just start with an Absorb Soul on our 1-1. Because we're going to play a bunch of units here anyways, so... Uh, I want to play this deckhand next uh, after this blue card because deckhanding on a red card is really good because you get your keg and it just like it essentially like burst speed puts a keg into play and it makes them do two damage so they can't stop. So here we'll do this. So this starts to deal one to each of those. And then we drew into a whale, which is really good. Whale just like board wipes him. Uh, sure. I don't know. Let's see here. What is this stun? Okay, so it does stun the sisters, which is like really good. That's really good, actually. Uh, because we just want to kill the lifelink one. That's really all that matters here. The lifelink unit is, in fact, the important one. So we killed off that, which is good. We UB orned, which doesn't really matter. 
The reason I didn't Yibi warned at first, like on the Golden Sister, the Lifelink one, to get that card draw, is just because I actually just didn't know which one it would target. Um, so the only reason I hovered it there, because if you hovered, you see how I saw that this was going to die? Alright, so he's out of deny mana, so we can go ahead and whale. It should kill both of these. And now we still have enough mana to do double 3 3, so you can pale cascade Zoe. Sure, you can keep the Zoe alive, that's fine. Or it's gonna apply just ridiculous amounts of pressure here. Go Hard was an insane draw. We finally drew Go Hard 14 cards into our deck. He has to get a 0 2 challenger off of this for that space to matter. I'm oh, sorry, a 0 mana 2 1 challenger. So we can Jagged Butcher. We can Go Hard. It looks like he didn't get the 0 mana 2 1. So we just killed the Zoe, and that's the game. So literally, like, without Go Hard, we beat an anti-Go Hard deck. Just because of how much pressure we're able to apply with our Burble Fish, how much pressure we're going to apply with Elise. An amazing card, by the way. And, I mean, he gained at least... He gained 10 life that game because he cast Star Shaping twice. So he cast... He gained 10 life. He board wiped us, including a leveled up Twisted Fate. And we are still able just to just immediately refill the board and just completely take control of that game so um yeah this deck is just absolutely crazy both of those games we did end up drawing go hard on like literally the very last draw of the game to kill off that zoe but uh so it ended up not mattering but go hard just makes all of that a lot easier like imagine that first game how much easier it would have gone if we had a go hard at the start of the turn or the start of the game we could have go harded his uh like one one crack shot and negated a bunch of damage so this deck is just an insane aggro deck control deck mid-range whatever the fuck deck you want to call it deck and it's it's definitely getting nerfed soon so if you don't have very many shards and you're looking to make a deck this deck is by far the best deck in the game right now the most played deck in the game right now but i don't know if i would craft it right now because it is in fact like we have confirmation that this deck is getting nerfed go hard or, or at least pack your bags we know for a fact is getting nerfed so i would wait to see what the nerf is if you have very limited shards like if you're a free to play player and you can only make one deck right now i'd wait to see what the nerf is to see if the deck is still playable who knows maybe they do a riot and they don't nerf it enough and it's still completely playable and still a completely fine deck um, which in that case i'm sure it won't change much but um that's gonna be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed the games I hope you guys enjoyed the deck guide let me know in the comments below what video you guys want a deck guide on next uh, i've heard a lot of people ask me for a deck guide on the ezreal foundry mill deck um so if you guys are interested in something like that let me know in the comments below that's gonna be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed go follow me on twitch i stream on there monday through friday i post videos on here youtube monday through friday and i'll see you guys in the next video